So in this video, I'm just trying to introduce reproduction generally. We'll define reproduction as any time an organism uh, makes a new generation of its species or produces an offspring. And as we'll see, the key to reproduction is that you have to be able to pass on all of your genetic information reliably to your offspring so that they have all of the traits that they need to continue the species. So if we're talking about genetic information and we're really introducing genetics here with this first video, let's talk about some really important genetics terms to keep straight. Um, all three of these terms that I want to highlight in this particular picture are in the nucleus of our eukaryotic cells, um, but they're a little bit different, so make sure you can kind of keep them straight. Uh, the first term is DNA. Uh, DNA is the actual physical chemical itself that makes up our genetic information. So we've kind of covered it before. We'll talk much more about DNA actually in our next unit. You kind of remember that there are four different types of nitrogen bases and that the sequence of those nitrogen bases in the, in, kind of inside the double helix, that sequence will ultimately teach the cell how to build the, the, a protein correctly, let's say. Um, and as it turns out, so that's kind of related to our second term. Our second term is gene, which isn't highlighted here. Uh, but a gene is just one particular segment of that DNA code that maybe codes for a particular protein or, as it turns out, an RNA. Uh, so if you have, say, like a, a stretch of a, a thousand bases that code for how to build, say, hemoglobin protein or something like that, then that would be the hemoglobin gene in the midst of that uh, uh, DNA sequence. As it turns out, not all the DNA code codes for genes. Genes are actually kind of rare in the overall human DNA code. Um, there's a lot of other DNA code that doesn't directly code for proteins, and so they're sort of non-gene regions. Um, and our third term, then, is chromosome up here. So a chromosome is much larger. A chromosome is, is all of the physically connected, continuous DNA chemical um, connected together. And as it turns out, our genetic information kind of comes in multiple separate chromosomes. So if you were to imagine taking like little molecular tweezers, poking them into one of your cells, inside one of your nuclei, nucleus, uh, then you'd actually pull out like 46 separate little hairs because your, your overall code comes in 46 separate pieces. Each one of those pieces is called a chromosome. Uh, each chromosome might carry on average like thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of genes. Okay, um, so ultimately we really care about chromosomes because chromosomes are what we're going to want to line up and organize in any kind of cell division to reproduce offspring to make sure we pass on different chromosomes carry different genes. So we want to make sure we pass on all of the chromosomes correctly to our offspring. Okay, so um, with that kind of introduction, let's just wrap up by talking about asexual and sexual reproduction, terms you've probably heard of before. Um, some organisms can do both, so we wanna make sure we understand why both of them are advantageous. Asexual reproduction involves just one parent passing on all of their DNA, so generally, unless there's a mutation mistake while copying the DNA, uh, that offspring will be an exact genetic clone of the parent. Whereas in sexual reproduction, there are two parents, each contributing half of their DNA so that the offspring has the full set. Um, but as we'll see, that really generates a lot of variety in how those two parents might uh, produce different offspring genetically because they might pass on a different half of themselves each time, which I'll show you here. So let's uh, uh, show you a little bit further. So I just sh showed a very simple example where maybe a species has four total chromosomes inside their cells. Um, and as we'll also see, um, uh, chromosomes tend to come in pairs. And so that's another term I want you to keep track of. Uh, we call these pairs of chromosomes homologous chromosome pairs. The homo root word means same, and so what we're trying to say is that these pairs carry the same genes in the same location. So both of these chromosomes for this species carry the R gene, which maybe generally codes for what, what shape a seed might be in this species. Maybe you also remember the term allele. So alleles are like different possibilities for those genes. Maybe this particular organism has both different alleles on its chromosome uh, pair. So maybe it kind of carries the uh, uh, one version of a gene that makes a round seed, but another version that makes a wrinkled seed. 
Maybe you remember that we use uppercase and lowercase letters because the uppercase letter dominates in what we see overall. So this would be an organism with a round shaped seed. And then this organism also has a different gene on a different chromosome pair that make code for what color the seed is. And maybe in this case, they show yellow seeds because all they have are yellow alleles. Okay, so in sexual reproduction, all we're trying to say here is that maybe this organism came about because its parents looked like this genetically, and they passed on a certain half of themselves. Maybe this particular parent passed on these chromosomes to the offspring, and maybe this parent passed on this chromosome and this one, and created the offspring that we see genetically over there. What's really important about this, again, is that you might, as parents, you might, be, uh, you might pass on a different half of yourself every time, and that's what really mixes things up in the next generation with sexual reproduction. Maybe if this organism itself goes on to reproduce, it could pass on this half of itself. Maybe if it reproduced again, though, it might pass on this half of itself instead um, to another offspring. And so the other thing about sexual reproduction is that you have a completely separate parent who passes on some complement of its chromosomes as well. And so maybe these two parents uh, pass on these halves of themselves to create a very genetically different offspring. Okay, so the real point of sexual reproduction is that it's really generating a lot of variety in the next generation. Maybe in many cases, as we'll see later, offspring who are uh, who, who genetically are quite different from either one of their parents in sexual reproduction. Why might this be particularly useful? Well, if an environment is changing a lot, then by producing offspring who all are a little genetically different, they might find some kind of genetic solution to a challenging problem in the environment. So this is really gonna tie in with evolution later. Asexual reproduction is a little simpler to think about in terms of how that this one parent would pass on its chromosomes, it would just pass on all of them. And so again, barring any kind of mistake while copying all of the, that DNA, the offspring should be genetically identical to the parent. So why might this be advantageous? Well, several arguments. Um, there's no need to find a mate and win a mate. Sometimes there's intense competition within a species to win mates. Both sexes can produce offspring if there are still separate sexes for this species. Um, and so another way of thinking about that is it, is it usually generates offspring faster. Um, and sometimes making an, an exact genetic clone can be quite beneficial. Uh, for example, if an environment isn't changing, uh, this is sort of the if it ain't broke, don't fix it idea. I'm doing very well as an individual, so maybe I should just make exact clones. Okay, so all we're trying to do in this video is introduce a few really important uh, vocabulary terms, G DNA, genes, and chromosomes, and how they're all a little different. Uh, and then we try to differentiate sexual and asexual reproduction.